people in this video we want to look at E. coli. E. coli is uh, under this family Enterobacteriaceae. It's a bacteria. It is Enterobacteriaceae means something to do with the intestine. So Escherichia, Escherichia coli or E. coli. So today the focus is here on the gram negative bacteria that is this one E. coli. So basically you can see it is E. coli. A lot of other things are there under Escherichia. You have Shigella also. Escherichia uh, you have uh, E. coli, Shigella, everything. Okay, then you have Salmonella and Enterobacteriaceae. Klebsiella also is an Enterobacteriaceae under Enterobacteriaceae. Proteus, Yersinia. Yersinia which causes plague also is under this family Enterobacteriaceae. Okay. Now there is um, uh, E. coli, right? E. coli is a commensal within us. It is a normal living flora in us. However, it can become pathogenic and cause um, urinary tract infection, diarrhea, pyogenic infections that is pus forming infections, septicemia also it can cause. These are the diseases caused by Escherichia coli. Pathogenesis basically it forms uh, the part of the normal intestinal flora, right? There are uh, many types of uh, syndromes which are caused by E. coli, urinary tract infection, diarrhea, pyogenic infections, septicemia, okay? So basically E. coli groups are uh, grouped into two categories. You have intestinal and extra-intestinal. Okay, intestinal and extra-intestinal you have. Extra-intestinal is represented at EXPEC. In that you have two, you have the urinary pathogenic and the meningitis. So you have what and all? Extra-intestinal pathogenic E. coli and the other one is intestinal. Okay, don't worry about this intestinal. Extra-intestinal you have urinary and the meningitis one. Okay. So, Basically, these uh, urinary pathogenic E. coli, they are uh, major cause of the urinary tract infections, community acquired urinary tract infections, okay. There are six groups under diariogenic E. coli. Under diariogenic E. coli, that is intestinal E. coli, you have six groups. You have EPEC, that is, okay, we will come to this, EPTEC, EIEC, all these, they have a lot of full forms, we will explain them later. So you have enteropathogenic E. coli, then EPEC, enteropathogenic, enterotoxigenic E. coli, enteroinvasive E. coli, enterohemorrhagic E. coli or verocytotoxin producing E. coli, then enteroaggressive, uh, sorry, aggregating, aggregating E. coli, and last one is DAEC, diffusely adherent E. coli. So what are we studying today people? We are studying about E. coli. E. coli is a gram negative bacteria. Okay. Now let us look at the details of this urinary tract infection because of uh, E. coli. It is the commonest organism responsible for urinary tract infection. Okay. So basically nephropathogenic potential these have. They have polysaccharide O and K antigens. They have fimbriae which helps in the adhesion of the organism. You would have seen the fimbriae right in the diagram. So these are the fimbriae. How do I erase this? Okay. Guys pay attention here. This is the flagella. Don't focus on that. These are the fimbriae. What you see here. The small small ones right. They help in adhesion right. Those are fimbriae. So what antigens did you see? O and K antigens, then some fimbriae, which will help in the adherence of the organism to the uroepithelial cells. Okay. P fimbriae, the receptor to which it attaches is believed to be a part of P blood group antigen, hence it's known as P fimbriae. It causes UTI and uh, the E. coli that causes UTI often originates in the intestine of the patient itself. Okay. So basically it will be ascending root of infection or hematogenous root. So from the person's intestine itself, he will get this infection. So how it will reach this uh, urinary tract and all that? Either from ascending root, that is probably by an infection, not cleaning properly, etc. Or from hematogenous spread from the inside itself, it can happen. Okay. Ascending root is through fecal flora spreading to the perineum and ascending into the bladder. Other commonly encountered bacteria urinary tract infection are Klebsiella, Proteus, Citrobacter, etc. Okay. <clears throat> Gram positive organisms that can cause UTI are Staphylococcus aureus, then Streptococcus faecalis, Streptococcus pyogenes, etc. 
Gardenel, Gardnerella vaginalis may cause UTI. Okay, Candida albicans or fungus also may cause UTI. That will usually be in immunocompromised patients. However, this video is about E. coli. So E. coli also causes diarrhea. You already saw that entero something E. coli. So many words here you can put. Enterotoxic E. coli, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. So many words you saw, right? We'll look at those now, okay? So enteropathogenic E. coli, E. P. E. C. E is common. E and C again are common. In the middle you can put whatever you want. Enteropathogenic E. coli, okay? Then you say E. T. E. C. Enterotoxigenic E. coli. So basically these are the mechanisms by which it produces the diarrhea. So basically in uh, infants they are saying enteropathogenic, right? Then enterotoxigenic. Again major cause in children they are saying and uh, developing countries, travelers diarrhea, tourista they are calling as tourista. Okay. Then Enteroinvasive, EIEC. So what and all you saw in the uh, thing, EPEC, you saw enteropathogenic E. coli, enterotoxigenic E. coli. Now you are seeing enteroinvasive E. coli. Okay. So easily you can say they invade the intestinal epithelium, right? Then EHEC, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. These are also called as virocytotoxin producing E. coli. They cause hemorrhagic colitis. They cause hemolytic uremic syndrome. Again common in infants and children but they can occur in all ages. Then you have the entero aggregative E. coli. Aggregative. They aggregate in a stacked brick formation. It's written here. Look at this. They aggregate, please give us a nice color here. They aggregate in, they appear aggregated in stacked brick formation, right? On some hep2 cells or glass. Now they are talking about uh, diffusely adherent E. coli. This is on hep2, the hep2 cells, they will have an ability to adhere in diffuse pattern. What is hep? Hep, you say, what is hep? That's nothing but human epithelial cells, okay? HEP is nothing but human epithelial cells. So you understood diarrhea? So we are done with the uh, urinary tract infection. We are done with diarrhea. Do you know what diarrhea is? Diarrhea, what will be there? Watery stools, correct? What about urinary tract infection? Burning micturition, etc. Then coming to pyogenic infections. So E. coli, what it can cause wound infection, it can cause uh, pus forming infections, it's possible. Okay, septicemia, it is very common cause of septicemia. Uh, so this leads to fever, hypotension, DIC, right? So DIC, remember DIC if you want, you can remember. E. coli can cause DIC, right? Basically it can cause septicemia. Mortality is very high, they are saying. So people pay attention here to the very specific things about E. coli. It ferments McConkey. So lactose is fermented, urease is negative, citrate is not utilized. Uh, glucose, lactose, maltose, mannitol are fermented with, with gas, sucrose is not fermented. Okay, let's say that again. Lactose fermented, lactose fermented with gas, urease negative, citrate not utilized, sucrose not fermented, glucose, maltose, mannitol, lactose, all these are fermented with gas, with gas, okay. What is significant bacteriuria if they ask in the urine, right, if there is UTI and if you see that the colony count of greater than or equal to 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml is considered as significant bacteriuria. So remember greater than or equal to 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml, per ml you should remember, okay. So that will be called as significant bacteriuria. So you will take a urine sample, you will inoculate it into McConkey or blood agar or cled that is cysteine lactose electrolyte deficient agar. If you see that the colony forming units account of greater than 10 to the power or, or equal to 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml. Okay, if it is there it is significant bacteriuria. So basically there are methods of detection of uh, enterotoxin of E. coli. So there are a lot of tests. In vivo tests are there, in vitro tests are there. In vivo will be the rabbit ileal loop. Ligated rabbit, 
This is going to be a rabbit for us today. A uh, uh, ligated rabbit ileal loop. Okay. So this is how you will find the, en the enterotoxin of E. coli. So ligated labit, rabbit ileal loop. Read after 6 hours, read after 18 hours. You will see heat labile and heat stable toxin. So this was a very brief video on very specific things about E. coli which is a enterobacteriaceae family bacteria. It's a gram negative bacteria. So basically you saw it causes urinary tract infection, diarrhea, pyogenic uh, infections and also septicemia which can be very, um, uh, it can cause mortality. Then you saw the lab diagnosis of E. coli, very, very specific things you have seen. That's all for now in E. coli. We will meet you again in the next video. Bye-bye.